John chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold. Now the sheepfold is a, the best way I can describe it, it's a, it's a square fencing area. It's got three sides and the front, there's a door. And what the shepherd would do is get all his sheep into this building. And he lays in, in the doorway. He puts all the sheep together, lays in the doorway at night. So any sheep that are going to get out, they got to go over the shepherd. Anybody that's going to get into the sheep, it's got to go through the shepherd. The shepherd is the door. In or out. Into the sheepfold. <clears throat> but climbeth up some other way, goes over the wall. That's wrong. And in Pilgrim's Progress, there's a great example of that. These guys come up and over the wall, and Pilgrim's like, you know, what are you guys doing? This ain't the way. Yeah, but, you know, who do you think you are? We're walking the same path. Yeah, and they, they go off into eternity. No one ever hears of them anymore. But climbing up some of the way, the same is a thief and a robber. You say, well, aren't they the same? A thief will steal without any force. He sneaks. A robber uses force and weapons. So a thief, you go out somewhere and you come home, you find out your house has been broken in. That's a thief. You go out and somebody pulls a gun or a knife on you and give me your money, that's a robber. So there are two types of people who will try to attack the sheep. Those that sneak in and those that will use force. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The one in charge of the sheep. And it's funny when you find Jesus in Revelation chapter 3. He's standing at the door knocking for the sheep to come out if there's any inside. All the thieves and robbers have climbed over the walls are in the church. That's the state of the condition the church is in. It's, Jesus knocking on the door... It, is there by chance any sheep in there? You're full of wolves. You're full of hungry lions. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, Peter speaks about the chief shepherd. There are supposed to be, yeah, Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep. But he even speaks about Israel, shepherds over them. There are to be shepherds over the sheep that are men that are living pastors. You notice how, ever wonder why they're given the name pastor? Well, that's where the sheep live. It's where the sheep feed. It's where they sleep. It's where they drink. Where they have little sheep. There's one main shepherd. And there are other shepherds. I'm going to get about them. <clears throat> so he that enters the door is a, is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth. Someone put in charge at the door, in control of those sheep. Many say the Holy Spirit, which is true, and also could be the pastor of the church. That pastor's in charge of the door. Who comes in, who goes out? I don't think a church ought to have non-sheep to enter in. I don't think church is a place to bring lost people. to bring sheep into the door the porter opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out Jesus guides the sheep out they hear his voice <clears throat> my wife and I've been watching this program you know just to test our knowledge of the Bible and we hear things that are not the shepherd's voice. And we'll look at each other, well, you know, that's not the answer in our Bible. And the world that watches that program, oh, ah, you know, they're not hearing the shepherd's voice. You got to be careful with another Bible because that other Bible that you got, that modern Bible, is not the shepherd's voice. You may not be following the shepherd. 
We heard one one verse. They had a couple verses that they quoted from, and there was no poeticacy to it. There was no rhythm of that verse where you couldn't teach someone a salvation or teach someone about it. It was so vain and bog. It wasn't like, for God so loved the world that he gave, you know, that's got rhythm. That's got living. That's got hope. And the verses that we heard recorded, oh, man, we're looking at each other. Like, what Bible is that garbage from? <clears throat> To him the porter opens, the sheep hear his voice. He calleth his own ship sheep by name. How's that? Now, right now, we're not talking about the church. They come later. We're talking about, listen, in all reality of the Bible, no Christian is called a sheep. Really. That's Israel. And I know we're referenced later on, other sheep, verse 16. But in reality, the church is never likened, it's likened to a bride. I mean, it's great for illustrations. You know, sheep are the dumbest animals. But we're not supposed to be dumb animals under Christ, aren't we? Isn't it everywhere wisdom, knowledge, understanding? Isn't that supposed to be what we're supposed to have? Call them by name and leadeth them out. That'll be the second advent. And when he put it forth his own sheep, his own sheep. Well, I guess Israel's got other sheep belonging to somebody else. He goeth before them, <clears throat> up ahead of them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Notice three and four, they know the voice of the shepherd. What is that voice? It's the word of God. Plain and simple. Again, danger to modern Bibles. It's not the voice of God. <clears throat> and his, his voice will be the guidance. The word of God. And a stranger will they not follow. But will flee from him. Antichrist. Those that really, the Jews that really, really understand are going to look at that guy and say, first of all, you don't need to be sitting there or standing. Second of all, you ain't speaking like you ought to be speaking. A stranger they will not follow. So strangers will follow the Antichrist who are not known of God but will flee from him to sell a peach waiting for the shepherd to come. For they know not the voice of the strangers. So there's more than one. All through life. Since the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, there have been plenty of imitators. And many people fall after them. This parable, oh, this is a parable. Isn't it interesting? It's told to us this is a parable. Lazarus. And the angels took him into Abraham's bosom, and, and the rich man died also, and in hell lifted up. There's nowhere it says anywhere in that chapter at all does it say that's a parable. But we're talking, this is a parable. God will tell us, hey, I'm speaking a parable to you. This is a lesson. It's an earthly story with a heavenly or spiritual application. When we get to heaven, when we see Israel, they're not going to be out there eating grass going, bah, bah. It's an illustration. People in Israel will understand a shepherd and a sheep. We want it today in America. We have no idea what's going on here. But Israel would. This parable spanked Jesus unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spanked unto them. From unbelief. 
So what's it tell you right now, the six verses that we just read? Didn't it say twice that they will know his voice? And they're, they're looking at him like, huh? What? That puppy dog, what? what you? So they don't know the shepherd. Jesus chapter 10, this says 32 AD, it could be right, may not, I don't know. 32 AD, the sheep are looking at him like, what? I don't understand. So don't go thinking all, the entire 33 and a half years of Jesus' ministry, everything was hunky-dory, and everyone just follows him and understood what he was saying. And and why am I not, as a Christian today, why is it I witness, do whatever I do to get the gospel out, and I don't have a group of people following me? Jesus does. But you're not healing like Jesus is healing. You don't have that power that Jesus had. You're not as sinless as Jesus is. One day we'll be sinless, but not now in our ministry. And even the, the followers that Jesus, the multitudes that they, he has, they still don't understand. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. There's I am. He's the bread. He's the water. He's the life. He's the door. So why is it when you see cartoons, you always see Peter standing there at the door? If Jesus is, I am the door of the sheep, and there is Peter, well, in that religion, does that make the Pope better than Jesus? Because there he is standing at the door at the gate, taking people's names and writing down what they're doing and looking at what they're doing. Isn't that the standard joke? So according to their hierarchy, according to the cartoon, Peter has more authority than Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the door. It's the open way. Now, match that where he says in Matthew, Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but, but straight is the, what? Yeah. Gate. And what was Israel, to, where, was, where was Israel to put the blood on the Passover? On, on the lentils of the door. And no one was to go out that door. So we're back in Exodus. Only way into your house is through the door properly. Anybody else comes through a window or anything like that, or through the roof, he said, you're a thief or you're a robber. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Well, that's an interesting thing. There were some people that, hey, you're not right. There was one man with Ahab. As wicked as Ahab was, he took, I think, a hundred of God's servants prophets and hid them and he did right of all the chaos that Jezebel had her 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 all her prophets this one guy he did right and we came up to Elijah and said listen haven't you heard what I did and the guy was spared so not all Israel went the way the broad way some did right Nicodemus has done right John of Aramea has done right. Paul will do right. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in. All right, how do you know this is not the church age? Because at the end of the church age, the period that we are in, live the scene, he's standing outside the door saying, come on out. Here he's telling Israel, come on in. Something must have happened going into this that Jesus finally said, I'm stepping out now. A lot has happened 2,000 years. I see these videos every once in a while on my fr Christian friends and stuff going on in their church. I look, yep, Jesus ain't there. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Well, look at that. 
and shall go in and out and find pastor. That's the second advent of the Jews. 1,000 year millennial reign of no curse except for the snake. There's no death, burial, and resurrection yet. That's later. This is not what must I do to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's not it here. <clears throat> You've got to enter through the door here. I don't see anywhere in the gospel it says door. I see a cross. I see a tomb, a door that was sealed. I see the door that was knocked down, kicked down, rolled down, whatever. And I see an empty tomb. And I see Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father right now. That's the salvation I see today. I see no door. It's a great illustration. The Bible can be doctrine. I forget the three things. The scriptural doctrine. Doctrinally, this is the nation of Israel. If I'm going to spiritually apply it, it can be great for a message for Christians. Yes, it can. But doctrinally, it's to the Jews. It's doctrinally before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. But you can apply this to a church. You can preach this message. It'd be great. Then you run over to Revelation 3, like I say, look, Jesus is he's not the door. He's standing outside the door. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Well, that's definitely the Antichrist. He wants to steal God's people. He wants to kill God's people. He wants to destroy the land and all the Jews. I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Eternal life. A great eternal life. Well, what's so great about going to heaven? Okay, let's spiritually apply. Have life. Okay, I got eternal life through the death, blood, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not only do I have eternal life, but I got a life more abundantly. You know, I cannot ever explain what's going to happen in heaven. Because of the condition I'm in right now. I cannot explain sinlessness. Because I'm a sinner. I can't explain with the big mouth I got. Bill have everything and anything I can say will always be right in glory. When I'm at work, I got to watch my mouth now. I got to make sure it's HR approved. When I get the glory, it's always going to be approved. When I more abundant, I'm going to a place with the view of the Lord Jesus Christ that I'm going to get a new body. And I don't need medicine, pills, doctors, or anything. I can't even explain that today. I am the good shepherd. Okay, not only am Jesus the door, but He is the good shepherd, a guide. A proper guy, the one that owns the sheep, the one that's equipped to take care of the sheep. I am the good shepherd, not a good shepherd, the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now, I've never met anyone like this, but I guarantee it's probably some preacher out there. I'm good. I'm good to my sheep. I up here at this pulpit, I am so good. Take it back, I do. I have sat under a man to say he was good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what Jesus said the good shepherd is? He gives his life. He lays down his life. The Bible says there is none good, no, not one. So get take out man. Scripture with scripture, this is the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what he's telling the people and the disciples? I'm going to die. The death of Jesus Christ was never anything. What, did, what was all that about? He spoke about it. He preached about it. He taught about it. He told, I'm going to die. But he, that's a hireling. This is a guy who's hired to take care of the sheep. I would assume, because I don't know anything about shepherding and all that, a shepherd would have to go to town to do some business or something. He would have to go to his family or something like that. He would pay somebody say, here's my sheep. 
Keep an eye on him. David would have to do something like this. Remember when his father said to him, go, go see his brothers and give, you know, cheese and give him food, give him clean clothes and see how their welfare is doing that. And then David left the sheep. He would have to hire a hireling to do the task of his father. David said, man, he walked up to Saul and said, listen, I, I killed a bear and a lion for them sheep. Now that hireling he hired, if a bear and lion came and came down to that, that hireling or the sheep and all that, that hireling would leave because that's not his. And there are preachers today who will leave. They don't care. Troubles arise. I'm going. Close it up. See you later. I'm going to go start, start another ministry. That's a hireling. He doesn't take care of the sheep. The sheep get bruised. He doesn't take care of them. The sheep get sick. He doesn't take care of them. The sheep will break a leg. He doesn't take care of them. The sheep get need to be talked to. The sheep need comfort. The sheep need a shepherd. He's not there. He's a hireling. But he that's a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see if the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep. The wolf. That's deceivers. Anybody who allows deceivers to come into their church and take the flock is a hireling. How'd you like to have this new name in heaven? Hireling. You don't own them. You had nothing to do with them. Leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf cometh. The wolf, the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. A church split. According to that verse right there, if you got a church as a shepherd, you got to watch that door. You got to be the door. You're not to let any wolf or anybody to enter in that's going to defile your sheep. But for the sake of numbers, we'll let anybody in. The hireling fleeth. I'm just trying to read notes here. Because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. That's a bold statement about a hireling. He's just paid to be there. Many, many hirelings come out of Christian colleges because they just want the ministry because they think it's going to be an easy job, just a Sunday and a midweek service, a couple funerals or maybe a wedding or two. And even get paid by the congregation to do those things. That's it. That's a hireling. I am the good shepherd. That's not me. That's Jesus speaking. And know my sheep. And know of mine. So he knows the sheep. And the sheep know him. So that's a great Christian. That's a great thing to do for a Christian. Well, oh, I'm a Christian. Really? Start asking them questions about the shepherd and see what they can answer you. See what kind of weird responses you get. When they talk about, I'm a Christian, you ask them about the shepherd. Is it really the shepherd they're talking about, or is it someone else? As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. Now we're getting to Jesus and God, and God is Jesus over the people. You're right here now. And other sheep, that's us. Other sheep. He's been talking to the nation Israel about Israel, about Jews. Other sheep, that's us. I have, which are not of this fold. A whole different dispensation. Under grace. Under the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Things are going to change, he just told us. There are sheep right now where we're reading that are going to be in heaven 
Why? Because they knew that was Jesus Christ. They knew that was the Messiah, and they believed on him. That woman that sat at the well in her, her, her entire city. Those people will be in glory. By the death, burial, and resurrection? Absolutely not, because they knew who the shepherd was. Jesus said, I'm the Messiah, and she believed it. How's that for salvation? Nicodemus, listen, I know thou art a great teacher. I know thou who thou art. Death, burial, and resurrection? Absolutely not. There is no death, burial, and resurrection yet. Can you say that today? I know Jesus. Really? You haven't even seen him. Remember, remember with Thomas, he said, Thomas, you believe? Amen. Glory to God. You believe on me. But blessed are those that have not seen and believe. You realize we are better than Paul today, and yet we're worse than Paul? Paul did not have this. And I'm holding a Bible for the people out there listening to this audio. He did not have 66 books of the Bible, and he could not carry around the Old Testament. It was impossible, those scrolls. I have a completed 66 book King James Bible in my hands. Paul did, Jesus didn't. Yeah, but Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and all that, they saw Jesus. I never did. Because I hold the word in my hand, the very word of God, the King James Bible only. I will say only is them. You don't like it? Tough. Jesus told Thomas, yeah, you believe on me because you see me, glory to God. But blessed are those that have not seen and believed by the word. The other sheep. The other sheep that believed in the word that has already been printed. And yet we're the worst. Look at the church age today. Look how it is. And we have the word. We have other words. We have other ways. We brought the world in. The pastors have not been faithful. They just leave the door open. They got the revolving door. And look at a, look at a mess. Look at a rock. They let the world in. They let sinners in. Don't believe me? Vacation Bible. Fellowship dinners. Bingo night. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. That's a cringe for the Jews. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also i must bring i must bring i must bring and they shall hear my voice come up hither and there shall be one fold and one shepherd Look at that, a unity of all finally who believe in the lord jesus christ Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Wait a minute, I thought the Bible kept on saying the Father has the power to resurrect. The Father will resurrect me. I'm going to be resurrected by the Father. The Father will draw me to, right? Well, he just said right here, I might take it up. Well, if I could take up my life, and Jesus said the Father brings up my life when I'm going to die, guess what Jesus just said? He is God and has the power of God. Scripture with Scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a man that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Therefore, may I ask you, other sheep I have, boy, uh, no man takes it from me. That's kind of interesting. Who killed Jesus? No man. Yet the Jews will be charged for the murder. Pilate will be charged for the murder. But how can you kill God? You can't. That means he had to give up his life. He had to do a miracle. You know what that miracle was on that cross? What was the final living miracle? Let's put this on the, on the 
trivia package. What was the final miracle that God had to do on the cross? He had to die. It's impossible for God to die. He's eternal, isn't he? But he died on that cross. That was a miracle. And when the Bible says he yielded up the ghost, that was a miracle. That was the last miracle ever on this earth that Jesus done alive. In the flesh. With blood flowing through his veins. And spilling out over the ground. He died. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. The great shepherd we are learning is going to Calvary's cross. And how many of those sheep understood? None of them. No one. Who came to that tomb the third day looking for the resurrected Christ? No one. The women came with the spices and the bandages and whatever they needed to wrap the body. They didn't even think about, you know what? I forgot about that stone. Because I forget which God, but one of them said, wait a minute, who's going to roll that stone? Oh, oh, yeah, we didn't finish the job. They didn't come for the resurrected Christ. They went and told Peter and the, and the disciples, Peter and John come running. Peter runs in. They're like, okay, bye. <laughs> the disciples are here. They're listening. He's going to die. It happened, didn't it? Exactly as he, he said. They, they would... They never got it. Those two men, they're walking to, to Emmaus. Or from Emmaus. To or from, I forget. Jesus sitting down with them. They had no idea who he was, what he was, until he sat down and broke, broke bread with them. Then they realized, and as he, as he went, why didn't our heart burn in us? I have power to lay it down. I can't say that. I could say one day, you know what? I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a gun. I'm going to put it in my mouth. I'm going to take my life. I ain't got the power to do that. I can take a gun and pull it to, to the temples of my. I still don't have the power. God may say, "You ain't done." Suicide is not a power. You may survive. You may not want to survive after doing what you do, but you may survive. You don't have the power. Jesus knew at what moment that he was to die. And he died at that moment. No minute less, no minute more. I don't have that power. I can't go to a tombstone right down when I was born and right down when I'm going to die. I don't have that power. Jesus could. And I have power to take it again. Resurrection. Well, Jesus, we listen, this is the fourth gospel. We've studied Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, haven't we? Haven't we say that Jesus told us that the Father has that power or the resurrection? Even Paul later on is going to tell us that. But he just said, I have the power to take it up. So if, if God has that power, and Jesus says, I have that power, guess who Jesus is? This commandment have I received of my Father. Here's another good trivial question. Did Jesus have to follow any commandments? Yeah, 11 of them. Wait a minute. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not honor thy father and mother. Brother Hayward, there's only 10 of them. No, there was 11 for Jesus. What's the 11? Go to that cross and die. And when he prays in the garden, he's not praying about his death. He's praying about that cup. Thy will be done. I have no problem with dying, Father. Matter of fact, from the deaths I've seen, they look pretty peaceful. Lazarus was, oh man, he was that, 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 that son I raised and, and named him. Man, he was just laying there. He had no trouble. I have no problem with that, Father. The sins, I've got the problem. But nevertheless, thy will. What's thy will? You die on that cross and you take those sins. I got equally asked these eight eight here. There was a division, therefore, again, again, he's always causing division. You're you are to cause division because of Christ. 
among the Jews for these sayings. What? Verses 1 through 19. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? That, would, that is what the world would think of you when you preach the Bible. That guy, man, that guy is full of the devil. Shut up. Don't listen to him. Come on, children. And my wife always marks out that she sees parents grabbing their children and forcing them down the road. Oh, but let's go see him. Let, let's go stand before a half naked woman, belly out her, her lungs, to sing some stupid song. Dress in costumes. Yeah. Dance to Your family's to think, you know what? There's something wrong with you. You belong to an occult. Right here. They're pretty much saying, Jesus, you got your own cult starting here. And yet we have the true word. Others said, these are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? See, there's people that believe and there's people, there's atheists and there's agnostics in this group. I don't know. And I'm going to tell you, I give more credit to an agnostic because at least he's, you know what? I don't know really don't know and the agnostics answer the atheist can the devil do this <laughs> would the devil give you no open the eyes of the blind first Corinthians 4 4 what does that say it says the God of this world blindeth the eyes Paul says Paul answers this question later on isn't that interesting and it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was the winter. And this would be, I have a note here. And this began 164 B.C. There's no Old Testament scriptures. This is from Judas Maccabees. And I've got a note here. It says December 25th, today would be Hanukkah, this Feast of Dedication. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Well, it was not really Solomon's porch because Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian army destroyed it all. But he's on the east side. Then came the Jews round about him. They surrounded him. And said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Hasn't he? Didn't they say we, we're going to pick up stones and we're going to stone him? You know. So let's see what Jesus said. Jesus answered them, I told you. Has Jesus ever said he was God? I told you. If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly, I told you. What answer is that? Yes. That woman, I know Messiah has come. And I'm, I'm not calling, but I am he. The my, Messiah is God. <clears throat> and ye believe not. I told you, but you won't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Everything I'm doing is to prove who I am, what I am. But ye believe not. He just did a miracle. Remember he did a miracle feeding the, the 4,000. Show us a miracle. You didn't believe it. You didn't believe it. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. When did he say that? Chapter 10, what we just read. You're not my sheep. You have not heard my voice. Twice he said that. And it's even said that, uh, verse 6, this parable spanked Jesus unto them, but they understood not. Here they are. Will you tell us plainly? He has. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they know, and they follow me. 
If you've got the ability to know that somebody quoting scripture say, you know what? That's not scripture. That is not the Bible. I just heard. Every ability to hear a preacher get up and preach, you know, that message is wrong. You are one of Christ's sheep. You know the difference between Jesus and a phony. To show another illustration, we get all kinds of people come up to it. Well, you know, they'll tell my wife, he's too loud, and uh, Jesus wanted to, and all, she could write a book about the excuses why I shouldn't do what I'm doing. They have no idea who Jesus is. And then when my wife tells them, and she will. He's doing what the Bible says to do. He's doing what Jesus did. He's doing what the 12 apostles did. He's preaching the street corner and lifting up his voice. He's got to lift up louder with all the, you know, the noise and stuff like that. She knows the word of God. She knows Jesus by the word of God. And she'll sometimes she'll come up to you. Well, she said something like this. Is that really in the Bible? No. They got something else. They hear another voice. They don't hear the voice of God. My wife knows it. Because she's known of God and God knows her. My sheep hear my voice and I am known of them and they follow me. I wouldn't do that. Jesus wouldn't. You're not following. Going door to door knocking. That's in the book of Acts. They went door to door. Tell me, find me in the Bible where it says bounce houses. When Jesus had his, his, fellowship, his last fellowship night, who was in that room that didn't believe on him? Even Judas believed Jesus. He wouldn't have walked with him. He had a point in chapter 6 to walk away. He stayed. Beside the Catholic hierarchy junk. I give unto them ever... Uh, excuse me. I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never look perish. Eternal security in John chapter 10. How's that? When you become a sheep or lamb of Jesus. And I get this. Ready? Get this. Listen. When you become a sheep or lamb of Jesus. You never will become a pork chop. Or a lamb chop. He will never put you on the spigot to cook you. You will always be a sheep. Now he may use your wool, but my wife was just telling me the other day. She's just talking about some with the rabbits and stuff. That don't you don't kill them and it don't hurt them. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Eternal security. My father, which, now remember they asked, tell us plainly, are you the Christ? My father, he's told us about eternal security. My father, which gave them me, ooh, we are a gift of from God to the son. My father gave them me. My father, which gave them me. What verse can you match with that one? For the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at that. Romans 6.23 Is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. What, did he just what was the question? Are you truly the Christ? I and my father I want. You ever want to aggravate and get a, a Jehovah Witness madder than Hades? Hell? Quote that verse to them. They will get angry. Then, watch this, then the Jews took up stones a second time again to stone. Why would they take up stones to get him? Because he's just said he's God. And according to the law, any man that says that he's God was to be stoned. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? Okay, you're going to stone me. Which work? What is the charge? 
what is the plea to Pilate that you're going to stone me right now? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. Did you get that? Throw 1030 at a Jehovah Witness and he'll get angry enough to stone you. Why? Because you just proclaim Jesus is God. And there was no constitution, there was no law about killing Christians or anybody in this country. They would kill you for what you just said. Just like they wanted to kill Jesus. Did Jesus ever say he was God? Here you go. And the Jews testify of that fact too. The unbelieving, ungod-fearing, wicked Jews said you just said you were God. Now go check that in the modern Bible and find out what you read. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Oh, look what he just said. Isn't it isn't written in the Bible. Isn't it not written in your law? I said. Psalms 82 6. Under Psalms 82 6, next time you go through there, you want to make a, make a note, Psalms 82 6, that Jesus said, I said this. Man, he took that knife and he just stuck it more into their gut. <laughs> I said, ye are gods. We're all gods. We all worship ourselves. We all have our selfish moments. I mean, if it's true, why would God have to say to husband, love your wife? Why would God have to say to wife, you better give him reverence? Because we all think about ourselves. Why does he tell children, honor your parents? Because they're going to think of themselves. Why does he say, you know, you ought to give your pastors a, a salary and something to live on? Because we think of ourselves. Why does he tell us, you know, we ought to treat our employers correctly and do a good day's work? Because we think of ourselves. And if he called them gods, on whom, on, unto whom the word of God is, Cain, direct revelation, and the scriptures cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, set apart, and sent into the world, for God so loved the world, that blasphemy is because I say, I am the Son of God. You also said you are God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. What separates Jesus Christ from everybody living in Jesus' time right now? All the stuff he's done. There are people who have had leprosy can now go home to their family and get a job. There are people who've got maintenance. They couldn't do nothing. Now they can walk. Now they can handle a coffee cup. Now they can put their arms and feel that baby's face that just was born. Now, there are people who could never see. Now they can look into the eyes of their spouse or look in the eyes of their parents and say, wow, is that what you look like? They can speak. They can, they can talk now. They've been possessed. They've been lunatic, and they're free. See all this stuff I've done in 33 years? Thir well, three and a half years. I look at 33. Three and a half years. You seen what I've done? Now. Mr. Priest, Mr. Pharisee, Mr. Sadducee, what have you done? Here's a piece of paper and a pencil. Write down all the great things you've done. Come on. I'll tell you what. I'll give you, a, I'll give you 30 days. You, you, you take that paper home 30 days. Write down all the stuff you, that I've done, that you've done. Nothing. They haven't. When he told that guy with leprosy, you've been healed, go to the priest and give the gift of more. That freaked them out. I guarantee Oh, I know that's in there. Where's that scroll? All covered with dust. Leviticus 13, 14. Because never a man was healed of leprosy except for Naaman, and he didn't have to go to the temple. Did you know that? 
If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I am in. All right, you don't want to believe me? Look at my works. My works would undoubtedly testify that I am of God. But they won't even look at that. Seek us a sign. Give us a sign. Tell us. You know, you can turn yourself blue and red, white, and blue to try to get a lost family member saved, and they don't want to know. They will have nothing to know. You're, they're not going to know. Talk to me personally about it. I've tried everything. I'm just on the bound of prayer. That's it. But I'll tell you what. I know the works of God. I know how faithful God is. And that person dies and go off to hell. I'm clear. I'm clean. And God is righteous still. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know. And believe that the Father is in me and I am. You know, I got a work that unsaved people don't understand. I know I'm saved. And I've seen the works of God do in my life that no one looks at. They don't even understand. They can't understand because they have not been saved. People who are, who are not saved want God to work in them before they're saved. That's not going to happen. Therefore, they sought again to take him. But he escaped out of their hand and went again uh, went away again beyond Jordan into a place where John at first baptized and there he abode so he's in the wilderness he's in the the place uh, I forgot what the name of it was where there was much water and many resorted unto him he can't get away can he many resorted on him why And said, John did no miracle, but all these things that John spoke of this man were true. They're following because he can do things. He just spoke to them and said, listen, okay, I just told you who I am. You don't believe in my work. There are people who are following, believing in his works. And many believed on him there. He's doing things. And even if you could be with Jesus, Thomas, there are many people coming after you who have not seen, have not seen any of their works. And blessed are they that believe, even though they haven't seen anything. You know?